Hello there, you're once more welcome to the Glory Realm Devotion Moment. This is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. God has been so good. No matter what you're going through, even if it doesn't look like things are working in your favor, I'm telling you, God has got everything under control. Everything will work in your favor, especially if you love him. You know, the word of God in Romans chapter number 8, verse 28 says, We know that all things work together for the good of those who love him, those who are called according to his purpose. And so if you love him, and you're called according to his purpose, you have an advantage. But if you don't, something is going to happen to you today on the broadcast. You know, yesterday on the broadcast, we were looking at, you know, the reality of the final days of Jesus' earthly ministry, you know, and he was talking with his disciples. And he was trying to make them realize, though he called 12, one of them, in spite of all he's been doing, has not really yielded himself to the things of God. And, you know, he was talking about the importance of believing in him, what he has to offer as the Messiah. And so we were reading from John chapter number 13, and we were in verse, we stopped at verse number 20, so I would want to start from verse 20 to give you a connection there. From verse 20, the word of God says, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, he who receives and welcomes and takes into his heart any messenger of mine receives me in just that way. And he who receives and welcomes and takes me into his heart receives him who sent me in that same way. So when you receive somebody who comes as a messenger of the Lord Jesus, you receive Jesus. And if you receive Jesus, you receive the Father who sent him. And so you are open up, opening up yourself to unuse your glorious blessing. And if you receive the servant of God, then you receive the Lord God Almighty. You know, sometimes some people are so kind of obnoxious to servants of God. But this is just what is happening. You're really being obnoxious, unfriendly to God himself. I didn't say so that's what the scripture says. The next verse goes on to say, verse 21, after Jesus had said these things, he was troubled, disturbed, agitated in spirit and said, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, one of you will deliver me up. One of you will be false to me and betray me. Now take note of this. Jesus wasn't agitated, wasn't troubled, because of what will happen to him. But he was troubled because one of his, somebody who had been with him, supposed to be one of his disciples, is the one that will betray him. I'm telling you, if you know what it means to be betrayed by somebody who you trust, that pain goes deep down into your being, especially if you love the person and you've done all you can to help the person become something and then the person turns around to fight against you. That is the kind of situation Jesus is looking at here. And verse 22, that was goes on to say, the disciples kept looking at one another, puzzled as to whom he could mean. So, you know, once you heard such a thing, everybody's kind of trying to, uh, who could that be? How can there be somebody who is a who is, who is a backstabber among us? Is that really possible? Sometimes uh, people who have evil intention, it's very difficult to spot them out in, in the gathering of God's people, but this is the truth. This is the reality. And Jesus wasn't just talking, he was saying the reality of what the situation is. And then he goes on to say in verse 23, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved, whom he esteemed and delighted in, was re reclining next to him on Jesus' bosom. So Peter, to so Simon Peter mentioned to him to ask of whom he was speaking. Now take note of that. You know, there's one of the disciples, and that happened to be John. He was just trying to uh, be, be nice by not saying, uh, you know, myself, because it's the writer of the book of John, all right? 
But without doubt, he was the closest to the Lord Jesus. He was even reclining, I mean, resting his head on Jesus' bosom, on his chest. And, you know, Peter had to talk to him and say, please find out, who is he talking about? And it's amazing. Now, in every setup, there are people who have a way of getting into the heart of the leader. Others may not be able to do that, but they know just how. Why? The simple reason John had that access is because from the heart of John, there's deep love for the Lord. Now, the Lord loves every one of them, but the response from each of them is not the same. Now, in a system, some people will think, oh, the, the leader of the system. And yes, I know that there are some leaders who are partial, but you know what? I found that, that in a system, you know, uh, among the persons close to the leader, there are certain persons who know how to get to the heart of the leader. They don't just want to be yes men. I'm not talking about yes men. I'm, I'm not talking about hypocrites and psychophants. I'm talking about people who care so much to know the heart and the concerns of the leader, all right? John had that kind of heart. Now, if your heart is actually sensitive to the heart and the needs of a leader, you're always going to be able to tell you can, to a great extent, you know, you know, be able to tell what's happening with the leader. Now, this, this is the problem we have many of the time. A lot of people kind of could, you know, uh, they are close to a leader because of what they can get. Uh, others, yes, are close, they just want to serve. But there are others who are not just there to serve. There are others who, who are part and parcel. They make themselves like, you know, so, so, so close, not just for the sake of getting close, but to show some concern. They are sold out to what is happening in that organization, in that ministry, in that church. They, 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 so, they, I mean, they, they, they show such allegiance that the leader cannot easily say no to them. They know how to get to the heart. You know, there's a song that says, there's a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God. A place where peace cannot molest near to the heart of God. If you know how to get into the heart of a leader, just as it applies, get in the heart of God, you will really get the attention of the leader. And so Peter, even among the disciples, Peter was supposed to be the number one. But Peter knew that there is somebody who has greater access. And there's no need for, for unnecessary jealousy if you have such a person. And I like what Peter did. Peter leveraged on that reality and got across to Jesus through John because he knew that John knew how to find his way to get the masters to speak. And so look at what happened. Now, um, we just read verse 23 um, and 24. Verse 25 says, Then leaning back against Jesus' breast, look, look at that, then leaning back against Jesus' breast, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I am going to give this morsel, bit of food after I have dipped it. So when he had dipped and when he had dipped the morsel of bread into the ditch, he gave it to Judas, Simeon Iscariot's son. Now, this is serious. Now, but look at how John got the information. We're going to deal with that one later on. Look at how John got his information. John leaned on his breast again. You see, John showed affection. That's one thing you would always get a response, response from Jesus. You don't find any affectionate worshiper, you know, left alone without the Lord attending to that person. Whoever knows how to show affection to the Lord, whether you're singing, lifting up your hands, you know, some people can hardly have tears, whether in public or in private worship is very difficult for some people. Some people don't know how to even express, you know, their dependence on God Why they are in, in private or in public. So if you don't know how to do that, you are cutting yourself off. But those who know how to do that, find a way to get into God's heart. All right. And so John leaned again. Now he showed affection first, then he asked the question. 
And you know, no one who does that is easily pushed away. The Lord answered it. So if you want to get answer from the Lord, don't become too tough. Don't try to play, play big boy. Don't try to look like, oh, you know, I'm not a kid. No. Before him, we are all children. You know that. Every one of us, we are children before him. And we should simply come like a child and say, Lord, if you're just going to break down before him, do that. Get his attention so that you can get the answer to your prayers beyond your imagination. It's been a wonderful time today on the Glory Realm Devotion moment. But I don't want you to miss it. You see, the greatest way to have access to the Lord Jesus, if you've not given him your life, if you've not made him your Lord and Savior, now is the right time to do so. Ask him to become your Lord. Now, don't become, you know, tough. Don't play the big boy thing. Just say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I have sinned against you. I've sinned against man. I've sinned. I just need you to help me. Forgive me my sins. Watch away my sins by the blood you shed on the cross. And please write my name in the book of life. I give you my life, body, soul, and spirit today. And I proclaim you as my Lord and Savior. If you do that, he is going to receive you. And that is going to be the beginning of a glorious new life. Thank you for being part of this broadcast. Till I come your way again tomorrow, I'm Eagle Louis Yegbebru. God bless you.